Right. So what we're going to do in today's session, we just we're going to do primarily the practicals. I hope uh, all of you had an option to take a look at um, um, the exercises that we were done that we had done yesterday, and um, I hope there are no doubts on that. So yesterday I think we deviated a bit out uh, to the UI portion. The reason was most of guys haven't, like I think only a couple of them had joined, so that's the reason we had moved it to just moved only to the UI portion. Right? Now that all of you are here, let's go ahead with the flow. Yeah, so now I think you can type in your question or ask me, either way. Uh, a day before yesterday, uh, we created accident properties in under C claim class, C claim work class. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we tried to configure in the section. We tried to configure it in the system for the screen flow, but we were not able to do. But I had a question. Uh, we were uh, configuring the screen flow under the work class but it was one level beneath that work class, so will it be possible to access that accident property at all? Because uh, for security reason, the child, children property cannot be accessed by parents, right? Yeah, that is so true. I got uh, yeah. yeah, see, um, that can happen in real time systems. So you just have to use the PI work page reference to do that. I think uh, we use PI work page dot uh, the property in the uh, yeah. accident class. You should be able to get it. Uh, but for some reason, there was some dependency. Um, I did not get a chance to take a look at it. I will be doing it in probably today or the other day on Wednesday and we're taking off. I will be working on that. Okay. So just hold on for that section alone. I will do it. Thank you. All right. Now going forward, you can see. I think in yesterday's session we discussed about the case by local actions and all these. So what we will do, just I think we just have only half an hour left. So what we will primarily do is we will do the exercises. Um, like application built, adding this case wide local action, case wide supporting process, all these things. Okay, so those are things that we will do in today's session. We mostly hands on. So either you can just follow me, or I will record the exercise session. You can later on uh, do it in your free time. All right. So let me just um, let's get started here. So you see here we have now uh, we have something claim information, review information. And if you see the latest class case, I'm just going to create the yeah, first one. The last class we were able to build this review information screen like this, a little bit more colorful and uh, neat. So what we will do is now enter this. Um, um, we will now try to introduce something called as uh, optional process and the case wide local action. So case wide supporting processes can be set here, as you can see on this flows to handle out of sequence events. So the out of sequence event that we have here, if you add a process, you can add it like. Um, you can add the out of event process by the name of by giving the name is anything that you want here. So um, ideally, you can give something like background BGV name. So um, if the user thinks that there should be an additional check, so we can at any point of time during the case life cycle, we can have this BGV needed flow. Okay. So, or we can just say background application just to make it more meaningful. So, we're going to give it here as background verification 
needed. So I'll give the name like this. Right, so this we can give it at the work level. Now the second level. So we'll click on create an open here. The reason why we're giving it this at work level is because the C claim and L claim both can use this background verification. So here we can just um, yeah, we can give here create the flow action. flow action here. So now we need the section two here. Save this and So here we can give just a simple um, a note and a checkbox as in is the background verification completed uh, or not or something like that. So that becomes makes it a lot more easier for the system to here say for example here we will just give a text area something like this to indicate it's a note. So this is out of the box property called as py note uh, notes no, this is py note and so we'll give it here um, I think we will not give the label as what is there we we'll just say uh, verification notes So this is another thing that we should be careful if there are properties already available out of the box, we should try to reuse them. And um, the next thing that we can do is we can have a checkbox and then we can just give it here a background verification passed. So we can create for this, we need to create the property this background verification pass. And just give BGA past here. Oops. So here we will give this as text itself. So if we get to close. And um, so checkbox caption, we will give the center thing, background verification passed. And default value is false. I think by default it will be false, so you don't need to explicitly state it. And the caption, we can give it on the left hand side so that the caption is there and then, yeah, right. All right, so here we will save the flow action. Then the flow. Right now, what we want to do is come here to the CF and this thing here and add this flow here. And if you see here, you have the manually start condition and you have the when status, uh, either you can put a when condition, uh, but they can do it only at some particular point or somewhere else, but um, either way, uh, you should, you will allow it to start only manually, not automatically. 
because we want the user to take the decision whether the bank notification is needed or not. Okay. Like there will be like a business uh, justification there. So if I come back to this flow here and click on actions, you should be able to see something here. Under add work, you should be able to see this background verification need. So this is the optional process that we have. Okay, so it will be under add work. So here if currently you see in the flow that we just have only this collect information under this we have this claim, and then we have this review. Now if I were to initiate background verification, it would come up like somewhere in between here. Okay, so let's see how it behaves. Let's click on action and work and background verification. Right, so if you see here, you can say first of all you can see the two assignments to complete, the review information and the background verification. Okay. And you can see here there's a verification note and the background verification password we checked earlier. That's all available here. Now if you look on this correct information, you can see here after this immediately there is this background verification. So dynamically the step in the case has changed. Right? So now you have like two assignments open. You can review the information and accept. You can wait for the background verification result to come. Right. So you can just type um, uh, objects passed. And you can just say background verification passed. Submit. And now if you look at this correct information here, you will see that this says background verification is also completed. And this claim information is also completed. Now all that you need to do is review and then push it to investigate the claim. Yeah. No, it's not the arrow symbol is I think is a question. And is it indicator of option process or manual created processes? See, optional process or manually created process, it's not R. It's the optional process that we have is a manually created process. Okay, so the optional process is called as background verification and that is manually created. So the arrow that we have is like indicative just of the current flow. That's it. So like whichever the current assignment that you want. See, for example, I open this one. If I click on this, it will show that you are currently on this flow. You can really write to assign this flow. Now I can make it slightly more different um, to come here and if you open this one, it, I mean if you had open this one it would show the arrow from that. that's it. Suppose and now the other thing is I can even create it again as well. Okay, so this optional process is available all throughout and as of now, we have given manually start without a when condition and uh, we can always have this check here, like manually start when BGV failed, right? So we can have that property check uh, only then we are going to allow to start again. So as of now, it's going to allow us to start multiple times, which we don't want. So we can say BGV failed is manually start when BGV failed. That means if background verification is completed once, then we are not going to start it again. They don't give the option to start it again. So we can create the when rule here. Okay, let's look here at work level. So you can either do it here or go to the advanced tab and do it, which is a lot easier to do. You can just say BGV passed is equal to false. Then that's that's it. BGV failed. Okay. Right. 
So now if uh, another good thing about vend rule is you can run the vend rule on the current object right away. So you can click on action run and you can uh, change the thread here. So let's see iPhone 3. You copy the existing page as PR work page. Then now you can run the vend rule. So I think it says you see here so VGV failed is false but uh, which is exactly what we have now because for CIFN3 the PGV failed is false and that's why that thing will not show up again now. So the option process will not show up again now. So if you can see here, let's give here PGV failed. Now because it is now true, if you click on this action, you see here you don't get the ad work option here. Okay, so now that option is gone. <coughs> Suppose I create a new case now. And then now I go to the main flow. Now here you see, I think it should have come up now. So let's see, uh, let's set the clipboard value. I think, yeah, because the property is, doesn't exist, even that check also needs to be taken care of. So we can just add an additional condition in here. You can say, um, we can just check if the property exists. Okay. Say, say we can have here exists and as a value that is the check we need. Right. So the property is what we have is BGV passed exists and has a value is condition B. Okay. And if it is okay, I think we need to give it space. And so we should have exists and has a value it should be the first condition we should check. So we can give that as A and this one as B. So the value should be false. If it exists, the value should be false. So what we can give here is B should be, it should, I mean, at the ideal scenario is, it should be not of B. Okay. So if it exists, it's all right to have it false. Or if it doesn't exist, um, say for example, it says BGV passed does not exist. Okay, so let's check the condition that if the property BGV passed does not exist, which is this case here, then what we need is we need it to evaluate it to um, true. Okay, so it should be not of uh, B. Okay, so we say this, we take action. But I think it would break another scenario. Let's just run this now and check. Yeah. See, here it is returned as true. Right, so it exists not of B and has a value. So, whereas if you run it on C, I have a tree. Yeah, I think we should change that. Let's see here now it is we'll see. Okay. Right, so I think for C hyphen three is so we should have He should probably just I think an easier way to do this is just to have you will just have only this condition alone here and 
that would be a lot easier. So what we will do, we will create another when rule which is BGB exist. Okay. So in that we will concatenate both the properties and um, both these when conditions and then we will check. Okay. Now check here. We or BGB done or something like that. Okay, so BGB done. So it says we can give here property exist and has a value. So we can give exist and has a value. So we can say here dot BGB passed exists and has a value. So when BGV done is done, it, the property exists and it has a value. That is one check that we can do. Right? Suppose for some reason, if the, um, if the client comes back and gives additional information, we should have the option to initiate the uh, BGV, okay? which is uh, background verification done and it exists and has the value. So that's something on this case that we can um, check. Okay. Right. So we have now two conditions here, which is first is BGB failed is false. So if background verification has failed um, in the first try, we can probably allow it to do it again. Or based on the business use case, we just want to just check if the value exists and then decide whether it should go forward or not. But either way, both these conditions need to be given here under this manually start when condition and accordingly chosen. So my intention here is just to show you that we can give how you can check whether the property exists and has a value check. And the other option here is to check whether the BGV has failed or not. Okay. So if it has failed, we don't do it or the either way around. Okay, so based on the scenario, you can get it changed here. Right. So you can change that here to have one additional. Uh, so we have like two end rules now, and then we can decide to concatenate them or use one at a time. Okay, All right. So that was about supporting process. Now we can have an additional local action as well here. So say for example you can add a local action like so the local actions already exist something like um, so we can add attach a file attach a note just attach a file is a very common flow action that should be available so you can you can give it here this thing called this. Right, and if you open the case here, I think um, not here. So, if you see here by default, there are already some order of the box options here attached to note, engage external property, and all these are already available here. We can get that modified, so that is, I think, available on that particular flow. So all that you need to do is open the flow here. And this is the flow. So at the flow level also there is an option to give the local actions. So one is in the assignment. Generally the assignment when we see at the local actions. It's available at the assignment level. So you can delete it from here. If needed, you can give it at the assignment level. But otherwise, you can just leave, delete it from here. Okay, that is one place to give a local action. Another place to give the local action is across the flow. So if you come here to this process design thing here, so you can give a flow-wide local action here. So you can give this flow-wide local action, the local action configuration at um,
I just note it down here. Can just give it here. Now again, an interview question that can be asked. Local actions can be configured at which all places. So you can give it on the case rule. First option is on the case rule form, the case designer, okay, which is called as case and local action. Then other place you can give it is on the assignment, which is um, assignment local actions, assignment specific local action. Another option we can give is on the flow. So just like flow vibe local action. So these are the three places generally you can give you know, we can configure the local action. Okay, let's keep this in mind. Right. Now if you come to the C hyphen four, you should set so let's just save this. We refresh this once. You see, now we have only attach a file option, which is a case by local action. So if you click on this attach a file, you'll have this option to select the file category and all these things here. So remember, we had learned that we can learn a bit about theory about the attachment categories. So let's take a look at that just here. So the attachment categories that exist here is under this admin. I think, I think it's under process. Yeah. Here you can see some out of the box attachment categories. So you can give an option here. You can create your own attachment category like um, a claimant confidential information or something like that. So if you open the search for file, you can be able to find this work dash file one. So you open this one. Right. So you can create this new one here. So let's say BGV paint or we can give the name here as um, the attachment categories like you can give it as uh, claimant confidential or you can just give it name like confidential okay. and you can either create a work dash level which will be applicable for everyone or just create it only at the work level for our application. So we created at the work pool level for our application alone. And remember this is something that we can create at the framework level. Right? This, this doesn't mean that we have to just stick only to our uh, work implementation level because this is a common reusable entity that we can create it at the framework level. Okay, so we can now give AIG and W process and W work and you can give it here. Let's click on create and open. So you can create here a when condition to check or we can create based on a security. So as of now we'll try to save this and then we will couple of things that um, even before we go for the security and the availability. So what type of file do you want to be valid for these type of attachments? I will give all the options here. Okay, so because we don't know what is confidential, it can be any of these file types. Okay, and here, the, so we can give the option here as the privilege um, or the access control. Okay, so we will give. Um, a privilege here, 
give multiple privileges here I'm going to say can attach confidential info save files then I'll say can view confidential files I can say can delete So we have can attach confidential files, can view, can delete confidential files. So if I say can attach, it means you can create it. Okay. Can view or we can say create and view. And you can probably even not edit it, just attach it. The view is just giving option only to view. Can delete uh, confidential files is delete on and delete any and basically if you have the delete option you should keep be given all the options uh, so you can just give uh, can what do you say uh, you can just say admin of confidential files Let's say admin of confidential files okay so you can give all these options here and if I save this uh, then yeah, first we need to create these privileges. Let's create them. Okay, so this also we are creating at the framework level. Now these as well I will create it. And just save these. Okay, let's check here. So yeah, let's click on this again. So you can view it now and this one right. right so we have as of now almost people holding all these privileges uh, can view all the files okay so the guy who can attach it can view and the guy with the view privilege can view an admin of confidential file can do anything with these files okay so this is how we're going to give the privileges so we will associate now this privilege to each of these um, access roles that are there and then things are just uh, going to be fine there right so this is how we will associate a privilege to attachments and uh, in that way we will ensure that our flow is uh, that in our work object we can ensure that people or uh, operators of these privileges can only do anything on these cases okay or only them only they can actually attach the relevant file so let us take a look at this attach a file flow action first Click on language. Let's see here. Let's open this flow action first. And this is a box flow action. Touch of file. Right, and here you obviously have a security here. We see here if the person has an action attached to file, only then he is shown this flow action. And by default, all the out of the box um, flows have flow action operators have this action attached to file. Okay. Now, if you open this one here, let's tab.
This is the one, so this is all most of this is out of the box and these are all available as well. So it says attaching screen and uh, this is the screen order we saw here with this all this like selective file and all these options here. So you can see that these are all available out of the box. We just we wouldn't just need to customize this. So if you see here even this is an HTML code. And this we won't be able to customize it because it's the final internal code. And we um, if you see here, um, you can see the options here. All the options like um, for people attachment. So you can just see the HTML code here, and this is currently this is just a Java code here under the JSP fragment. But uh, this is important for you to take a look at and understand what these actually mean. Um, just to create something like this in the future for your applications, because some custom requirements will require you to write some JSP code like these, and in order to get that, you will. Uh, and you will need to do right, a little bit of coding here, okay? But doesn't matter. So all that you need to do now is just create an attachment flow action similar to the one we have attached a file, which will be like attach confidential information, okay? Or even better, so you can make sure that if you go to this attachments here. Second, this attachment option here. So, if, so if you open this attachment screen here, <coughs> you can see these options available here. These siblings. So you can find this PYK's attachments at Pega End User UI and UI Kit. Now if you open this Pega End User UI, the option which is available at Pega End User UI. And if you do a private edit here, this has a default option called as advanced here. So currently I'm doing a private edit so that it as per rule resolution it comes to the top of the stack now. So now what we will do, we'll just come here. If I just were to refresh this now. And you can see here there is something called advanced here. So you can click on this advanced and this pops up the entire attachment like this. So you have an option called as add. And you can see all the options that are available here. Suppose if I select attach a note. Okay. Now I can select the category here as note or I, I should be able to configure it in such a way to get the confidential category here. This is, no, I think this is not available. Let's files, let's check here. Let's, see. let's check it here. Yeah. So here we should be able to get the option to, in the advanced tab, we should be able to customize it uh, to get the category that we have created now. As of now, the category is not available uh, because we need to do a bit of configuration. And that we will be doing it in the next class. Okay. So what we did today was just to create the attachment category and uh, create the privileges associated with that. In the next class, we will I'll show you how to integrate the attachment category to this particular case. All right. And um, um, let me know if there are any further doubts on this one. Any doubts on this that you guys want to clear? All right, so uh, we will now go ahead with. Um, so I think we will meet tomorrow at the same time. We will continue building this application. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Good day. Uh, let's meet tomorrow at the same time.